Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called The Writing on the Wall. Another episode I love. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything in the MCU that was released after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there's some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And let's dive right in. So, they the episode opens on, I think, the character Eliza talking about Burning Man, and I am resisting the urge to go off on a rant about it because it has been covered quite extensively by other leftist YouTubers. But yeah, the, the you know, apparently Eliza and Sebastian met in a bar, waved at each other as if they were old friends, and she's trying to figure out how they know each other. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, she yeah, he uncovers the tattoos. And she recognizes them, you know, she's not like, oh no, what is, you know, this, I've never, you know, this just looks crazy. She's like, how did you know about this? So that's a great hook. And, you know, he, he cuts into her and later they say, you know, oh, this is how he tries to remember kind of thing. I do appreciate that they, you know, they, the episode makes it very clear Wait, no, not, not Eliza. Janice. Eliza, I believe, is... That's right. Eliza's the, the one that Ward tr Grant tricks. Anyway, yeah. Um, you know, the episode makes it very clear that the American government screwed up and it led to tragedy. You know, it's not just, oh, this was like this... You know, the, the it, it's very clear that this would not have happened if the government wasn't trying to mess with with people. You know, they they it started with good intentions. It started as this way to try to help people, but you know they weren't careful enough. They didn't they they did some questionable things, and it had horrible results. And sadly throughout American history this is you know this has happened a lot and yeah we learn you know when Sky said it's a map it wasn't that she knew exactly what kind of map it was it was just that you know she recognized it must be a map which is the kind of thing you know another set of eyes on something and she's tried to map it into a bunch of different things they didn't you know none of it completely made sense which I mean if it's alien and if it's like another part it's you know it's some part of the universe or multiverse that you know they don't have that you know the humans on earth of the MCU don't have mapped yeah you know it's not gonna fit any of the maps they have and yeah we learn that Christian has covered up Grant's escape because of course he has, because he does not, you know, he realizes how bad it makes him look to, yeah. And, let's see the, yeah, Triplet found Grant, and May demands he stand by, and Grant reveals that he has C4 and a dead man switch. So, yeah, that's not great. And, and you know, Grant could tell he was being followed, which, yeah. I could buy that based on the character up to this point. And... Let's see. Yeah, and the... the um, so yeah, Sky and Coulson agree to check out Janice Robbins based on what they learn, and we get some more Fitzsimmons plus Mac, and I... It's in such bad taste, it's such a morbid joke, but Corpsey DM did make me chuckle, and, you know, Mac says, if you want something in life, 
you grab it and you you know walk away carrying it looking you know acting like it belongs to you you know and Simmons says I thought you were supposed to earn things you know work hard and earn things so yeah there's some friction there and <laughs> Would anyone like to leave before I get started? And, you know, several of them raised their hands. That was, yeah. And, yeah, very clever of, of Grant, you know, yeah, getting, you know, the way he tricks to, to get onto the bus and, you know, he recognizes Bobby you know, he, he could tell she was on page 117 before entering the bus. And now that she's on the bus, she's still on page 117. So she must work for Colson. And yeah, it's, you know, very, very excellent observation. And yeah, they have some, some great lines, some great, great exchange there. And yeah, he ends up leaving the bus, you know, and getting on a different bus, and the, the, um, I th yeah, that's what I, but, but yeah, you know, I really appreciate this, you know, spy, intelligence, counterintelligence stuff, and <laughs> Lance literally has a cowboy hat on, which Bobby also, you know, it's about being subtle, and she's like, you're literally wearing a cowboy hat, you know, just, yeah. And they put Coulson back in the machine, because he wasn't done yet, and, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, some excellent, you know, new reveals, we see that Janice Robbins, you know, she seemed fine, but then the symbols, you know, each each of the patients seemed fine after, but then the symbols kept popping up. And, yeah, really disturbing, you know, um, yeah, the various, the reactions to the treatment. Very, very nicely edited. And... I, yeah, very nicely done with how, you know, in the memory, the man we come to know as Sebastian Derrick, you know, he's saying, you know, I have to know, and then it switches, so it's Colson saying, I have to know. So, you know, we, the viewer, realize now he's obsessed with it, and, yeah, the other characters don't realize before he locks Sky in, yeah which was legitimately clever and yeah you know sky at this point trusts colson enough to to you know be alone with him near the the cell and yeah we meet Joel Gretsch's character Hank Thompson so when I think of Joel Gretsch, the first thing I think of is the 4400, and I'm guessing that's part of why he was cast here, because his last name is, in part, Tom. He is obsessed with discovering the truth behind some manipulated memories, and it turns out he used to be a spy. So. Yeah, the well, government agent in 4400, it wasn't really spy, but he was a government agent. So yeah, really appreciate that bit of casting. Look, I told you both, both, who was the, you know, so he, so he did already meet Sebastian, just very, very cool. Yeah, and he explains, you know, the pain helps me remember. And, yeah, you know, as we come to realize, the, the train tracks were, were built in a way that 
made a 3D map of like a city. Very, very chilling when Mac is counting to three and he specifies my gun is real. You know, I'm not this is not a this is not an icer. Uh, you know, and and yeah. Really Mac is a very compelling character. I I hope he sticks around. And yeah, love the the camera you know moving over the top of so you see you know that it is that it makes up some of the the pieces of the map the the train collecting thing yeah train tracks and yeah you know colson says now now we have all the pieces and yeah it, I am very excited to see where it goes. And we close on Grant. You know, first he, he trims and gets rid of the beard and the whole thing. And he calls the phone of Sunil Bakshi. And, you know, Sky figures, you know, maybe, you know, so she picks up, goes Hail Hydra. And, yeah, Ward knew that she would. He knows her well enough at this point to you know because it's it's very risky to to yeah but yeah and he describes uh, bakshi as a gift uh, you know maybe he does legitimately still believe he is part of colson's team and we see that he has a, a paper that has a, a picture of his brother so yeah that he has plans for his brother, and we know what he tried to do last time. Though that was a thing, when we were told that he tried to burn his house down, Garrett asked, did you know your brother was in the house? And you know, when we watch that, we think, oh, he's trying to kill Christian. After the revelation that, Ward, that Grant wasn't being forced by Christian to torment Thomas, Maybe it was Thomas in the, but, but yeah, it's very, very cool, you know, yeah, really, really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. Oh yeah, Imelda Corcoran, um, Dr. Goodman in this played Selby in Falcon the Winter Soldier, so that's, and appeared on Mandalorian, so just in general, and and was on Lost. Yeah, works with the, uh, you know, ABC and, and Disney on various things. Um, I think that is the specific ones for the, but, but yeah, um, Right, yes, the thing with, you know, yeah, he he calls, you know, he contacts Hydra, sets up the meeting, that was, you know, the, the C4 was so that S.H.I.E.L.D. wouldn't be able to stop him before he got to Sunil Bakshi, then he kills the, the other guys, you know, including the badass bartender, you know, who offers, you know, at first it sounds like, He's saying, I will let you choose your execute, you know, your the method of your execution, but he's off, you know, it's two different drinks. And yeah, you know, he left Sunil there knowing that, you know, the, the Colson's team of agents would go into the bar to, you know, hoping to get their hands on Grant. Uh, yeah. Very, very clever. And yeah, he did tell Sunil, you'll get so close to Coulson that, that you could kill him with a knife. You know, he didn't include the information that, I mean, you won't be able to because you'll be in a cell. He'll be on the outside of the cell, but, you know. So yeah, very nice little, I, I did really think, oh, he's, you know, going back to, to working for Hydra. But no, he, you know, and, and he says, this is just the first gift of many. So, yeah, very, very cool. And 
so yeah, IMDb Trivia Ward mentions Strucker, Baron von Strucker is one of Hydra's heads, and at the time this episode takes place, uh, hmm, that's, I'm not going to bring it out. Anyway, he made his debut in the mid credit scene in Captain America the Winter Soldier, returns in a later thing. So yeah, that was very, yeah, very cool. Right, and in the comments, Cameron Klein is the grandson of Stanley Klein, one of the Howling Commandos. Chasing Windmills is a reference to Don Quixote. And... Uh, that might be about... Yeah, and they mentioned that the Blue Alien is thousands of years old. This episode marked the end of the mystery behind Coulson's resurrection. And, yeah, someone noted Corpsey DM is, yeah, like Carpe DM. Yeah, um, I really appreciate how creepy and, like, disturbing the show is willing to get. And the, let's see, right, and yeah, Corpse CDM sees the dead instead of sees the day, and I think might be, right, and I, I like that, you know, Hank, yeah, he, he knows, you know, these are implanted memories, but I'm happy with my life. You know, that is something, you know, like hypothetically, because, you know, it, it feels like something, I, I, I don't think I've read a story by Philip K. Dick that had that exact resolution. But it feels like I haven't read everything he's written, so it's possible he has written, he did write that R.I.P. But yeah, it feels like the kind of thing that he would write if the, yeah, you know, because he, one of the themes that he was very fascinated by in a number of his, you know, in a lot of his writing was, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, when you wake up in the morning and you sort of, you know who you are, you know, you know, you have ideas for what you're going to do that day, and so that's based on your memories, you know, if you woke up one day and your memories were all implanted, that would be your reality, you know, and yeah, you know, hypothetically, if you prefer the reality that you've known, then realizing that they're, you know, it's not that all of his memories are, are, you know, not all of them are fake. The the ones he's had since, you know, the ones he has with his wife Katie, you know, those are real, but he had a different life before, and yeah, it is, yeah, there, you know, I, I quite appreciate that detail. See and right, I like when um, Mac encouraged Fitz to to play a video game. You know, pointing out some of the some of the benefits of doing so, which did feel just a tiny little bit like someone writing the script for this was like, "See, mom, you should let me play because it actually." It, it helps my brain and my hands sync up. There, there are a lot of benefits. And I already read the book, and I, I think I did a good enough job on the book report. So, so really, I, I should be allowed to play a video game. And that made me chuckle. And, yeah, someone did indeed enter into the IMDb memorable quote section, the bit where, you know, Bobby... Yeah, you know, Hunter is, you know, says, you know, it's okay, it happens. What did you do? Come on, too strong. Subtlety is key. And Bobby responds, 
you were dressed like a cowboy. And let's see. Oh, right, the yeah. When when they're talking about, you know, the the killer had GH325 in their blood, and Sky's like, don't look at me, I didn't do it. Just yeah. And I think that might Right, and the yeah, when when Janice Robbins asks Sebastian Derek, you know, are you an artist? And he responds, I do some carving now and then. And I like Mac, you know, just saying what kind of creature feature did I sign up for? Let's see. And and Mac just to me, you know, Cole, Fitz says Colson lost his. And just, you know, immediately, Mac, uh, there's there's not more than, like, maybe a second of Fitz not, fin you know, finishing the sentence before Mac jumps in, you know, marbles, mind, you know. So, yeah, it really, he is completely, you know, that is their dynamic now. It's really, yeah, great to, great to see it. And... I think that is all that I have to say about this one. So, yeah, the, the, yeah. I should be able to do the do do the next episode tomorrow where I also intend to do the last episode of season 2 of the bear and yeah until then make my marvel